Lord, we just settle in right now into this atmosphere that you have created. God, this moment that you have primed and prepared. Lord, we settle into it right now, absorbing your anointing. Lord, feeling your freedom. We know that your fire is in this place, that this is not a dead place, God. This is not a silent place, Lord, but this is a place that is willing to bring you glory. This is a place that is willing to put you first. This is a place, God. This is a place that is willing to do the work that you have asked of them. So God, we thank you. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you for being in the midst of us. God, we thank you individually that you saved us, that you didn't leave us where we used to be, but God, you brought us here today and we know and expect that there is more for us. So God, right now in this moment, pour out the new wine. Pour it out, Lord. We're thirsty, Lord. Satisfy us, Lord, in your presence tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good. Amen, amen. All right. I love the worship team here. Does anybody else love our worship team? And how about that song, See the Sun, right? Oh, my gosh. I love that song so much. <laughs> Oh, wow. If, um, just a little public service announcement. If you, are, um, if you are a Spanish speaker and you have a transponder and it wasn't working earlier, it is working now. So plug back in. <laughs> mm -mm. All right. Praise the Lord Jesus. I hope I can balance all this stuff up here. Woo! Well, hi, church. <laughs> My name is Christy. And... <laughs> You know, um, I just look out and I'm just like, this is my family. These are my people. <laughs> oh, man, I am just so blessed to be up here today. So humbled. You guys have like no idea the weight of humility, okay, that God has just placed on my heart the last couple of days in awe, okay, in awe of getting the opportunity to stand up here before you today. Thankful for my pastors, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. You know, can we give them a round of applause? They're out there breaking new ground. But is anybody else grateful for the man and woman of God? I constantly say, I don't know who I would be if it wasn't for the Wayworld Outreach. Like, not even just where I would be, but like who I would be. I get to be who I am today because of the work that God did here. And I know so many of you guys feel the same. I want to say tonight also, I want to honor my husband, Pastor Armando. I usually have to say, hi, yes, I am Pastor Armando's wife. He's everybody's favorite, but, you know, Team Mondo over there, all right? Um, it, I am so blessed. Uh, not only the work here at the Wayworld Outreach that just totally changed my life, but actually marrying that man might have saved my life, okay? <laughs> Woo! Like, literally, you know, going like, you know, on the highway to hell really fast, that was me, okay? Uh, I, just really quick, you guys, we're going to be going to the book of Haggai, and I'm going to try to fit this in in the time that they have allotted me. And those of you who know me know that that's going to be difficult. But in the name of Jesus, we will get it done. Thank you. All right, we're going to be going to the book of Haggai today, chapter 2. Um, but in getting started, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little introduction. I am going to acknowledge that, that probably a lot of you guys don't know me or you haven't heard my testimony. And you're like, okay, what's going on? So let me introduce myself. <laughs> Let me share a little bit about what God has done in my life because Christy, without God, isn't anybody you would take the time to meet. Christy, without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, isn't anybody you would want to listen to. Christy was broken. Christy w was losing her mind. Christy had been abused and in poverty. Christy was held in captivity. That's how I felt, just captured by the enemy. And there was nothing I could do to break free. There was no way out. I couldn't climb out of the pit. I, I, I couldn't turn the lights on. And maybe some of you in here know what that's like. 
maybe you guys can remember those moments. And you know what? If, if you feel like that right now, I just want you to know that there is a yoke-breaking anointing in this atmosphere, that there is a God who still saves and delivers, that you don't got to walk out the doors with that same feeling. You're not trapped. God wants us free. So here I was, they were reminding me 17 years ago, and I don't know how, I'm only 21, that's weird, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. but anyhow. Here I am 17 years ago, you know, coming to the Wayworld Outreach, coming out of this life that's so broken and in bondage, um, and, and I come into the way, and, and I actually was giving my mom a ride, and I, didn't, I wasn't coming for me. <laughs> and I'll never forget this day. I mean, I had grown up knowing God, just not the power and love of God. I had grown up in churches, but I had never seen a life transformed. And I came to the Wayworld Outreach in all my sin, in all my brokenness, in all my torment. And I remember, like, it was yesterday, just sitting right there by the back door, like, so I could make a quick escape. And I remember God saying to me, it's like he pointed down the aisle, and he said, stay here. This man is going to help you. And I said, God, no man has ever helped me. See, the unfortunate part was, I grew up in a home where my father was physically and sexually abusive. I grew up in a home where we were in severe poverty. I make a joke. I said, some people, I get up here and they talk about being poor. And I said, I haven't ever heard anybody say this yet. I was so poor, the kids in the projects made fun of me for being poor. It was that bad. In fact, moving into the projects of East L.A. would have been an upgrade for my life. I spent summers homeless, just really, just horrible poverty. No self-esteem, no self-worth. Now put your Kleenex away. (laughs) Because my God didn't leave me that way. (laughs) No. He doesn't want to leave anybody that way. That's why I believe God created the Way World Outreach. Because there are hurting and broken people, abused people, just like me, just like some of you, all over the world. And they need somebody to make a place for them. They need somebody to invite them in. They need somebody to lay hands on them and tell them about a miracle-working God that can change everything. Do I have anybody in the room? Come on. Thank you, girl. (laughs) Because we're going for them. Haggai chapter 2. I want to set it up. Because when I read this really tiny little book, two chapters, somewhere at the end of the Old Testament, I saw my life. I saw a people that had known God but had fallen into sin and they had got carried away captive into a foreign land. They were living in Babylon. They lost everything. The temple they had built to bring God glory had been torn down. And even though they knew God, they had been far from God for a long time. And God brought them home. That bringing home day was like the day I came into the Wayworld Outreach on 4th Street. And I saw that man in his brown suits. You guys remember the brown suits with the big arms, right? I love you, Pastor Marco. God bless you. (laughs) And I remember thinking, like, who's this guy? Half this church, no, maybe 75% of this church is homeless right now. Does anybody anybody come from, anybody at 4th Street? Hey, 4th Streeters, hey. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, so here I am in that place, and I'm thinking... I crawled out of this. I'm in a good place. 
I got a job. I have a car. I can buy my own stuff. What am I doing here? I don't need this. I know who God is. I knew who God was, but I wasn't living who God was. And when I came in and I heard his message, like FYI, all Pastor Marco preached for like the first five years was stop living in sin, move out of your boyfriend's house. It was weird. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but, but eventually I listened, okay? <laughs> but God was calling me home. God was saying, I know some people hurt you. I know some people abused you. I know life has been ugly and the enemy tried to lie to you and tell you your prayers weren't going to be answered. But I'm calling you home, daughter. Come into the house. And that's the people we find in Haggai chapter 2. They came home. But anybody know this? You know, when you've been through some stuff and you, and you, you kind of feel like you're getting yourself together again, you take it easy. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to mess up a good thing. You don't want it to get risked to go back to what it used to be. You kind of get overly cautious. You know, your prayers are my four, no more. Everybody else has to take, take care of themselves. And for the first five years I came to the way, I, I just sat there. I didn't serve anywhere. I didn't pray for anybody. I, I didn't aspire to do anything in his house but not go backwards. And, and that's a good first step, okay? That's a good first step for a lot of us, right? Okay? And I'm glad you don't want to go back. But I don't want you to be afraid to go forward. I'm going to start my notes in Jesus' name. I got like 15 minutes. They're like, <laughs> it's all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what I wrote something down. Let's just read the passage. Let's start there, okay? So I want you guys to have this in your mind. This group of people just like me, they come home. They're back in the house, but they're a little bit leery, and they're kind of just hanging out. They're lingering. And then, and then this word comes, rebuild my house. Restore my glory. Bring in the people. And they kind of were like, oh, okay, I just don't know if it's going to be as good as before. It's not going to be like before I lost my virginity. It's not like going to be, be like before I was a drug addict. It's not going to be like before, God, with you. It's going to be different. It's not going to be as good. That's what I felt. I felt like how could God use me to do anything, not just because what people had done to me, but also because those things I chose to do myself. And now here I am standing in God's house, disqualified, and I'm like, God, I can't, it can't be me. It can't, I can't do it. People pray for people like me. That's what, that's what I'm here for. So Haggai 2, 4 through 9. I'm going to read this word of the Lord. It says, but now, when? Now, oh, that's super loud. Did they have me really loud, or is that just me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was all looking around. <laughs> all right, but now, see, this is this is not a word to delay or sleep on. God is saying it says, "But now the Lord says, be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, son of Jehoshadak." Be strong, all you people still left in the land. Every single one of you sitting in a seat at the Way World Outreach right now, be strong. All of you watching online right now, be strong. My spirit remains among you. My spirit remains. It, it's not something you can't count on, not something you can't depend on. God is not a person, okay? You, you might have been let down. I was let down by my parents. I felt like I had been let down by the church. But that's not who my God is.
Verse 5, sorry. My spirit remains among you just as I promised. There's a promise with your name on it. There's a promise for your family. There's a promise for your neighborhood. There's a promise right now waiting with your name on it. And it says here, just as I promised when you came out of Egypt, so don't be afraid. See, we've done the work of getting free. We've done the work of getting saved and getting into God's house. But God says, there's another work that I have for you. There's more in store, so I need you to listen. For this is what the Lord of heaven's army says, in just a little while. I will again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and the treasures of all the nations will be brought to this temple. I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The future glory of this temple, the future glory of this house, the future glory of your house, the future glory will be greater than its past glory says the Lord of heaven's armies. And in this place, I will bring peace. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. Come on. I I mean, we could have just read God's word, right? The Lord of heaven's army is an authoritative title. This is God coming in with his might. He said, you know who I am, girl? I'm the one who commands armies on your behalf. You, you've got giants you're facing. You've got opposition you're dealing with. You've got warfare in your life. i got armies at your disposal. That's who I am. See, the problem is the enemy got us with some, like, Christian PTSD, right? We got all this post-traumatic stress from our BC days. And now we're struggling. We're struggling to operate in the power and the glory and the authority. But God wants you to know, I am pouring my spirit out. Now is the time for you to have the faith to lay hands, to preach the gospel, to cast out demons. You don't got to wait. See, God was talking to a couple people. I'm going to say it really, really quick. You know those crazy names in the beginning that you wouldn't name your children? Zerubbabel, don't start there, right? It means sown in Babylon. You know what that means? It means he was born in captivity. He had never seen the promise. He had never lived in God's goodness. He never saw the glory of God's temple. He had never. He heard stories about it. But he had the faith to lead the people out of captivity and said, I heard a place that has God in it. I heard about a place where God is going to move. Let's head in that direction. Jehozadak means Jehovah is righteousness or God has righted. It kind of felt like me right there. See, he grew up in the church. His family was, was, um, were priests. He was the grandson of the high priest. But he got carried away in captivity and he never became a priest himself. He never stepped in a ministry. So it's easy to now live in condemnation. It's easy now to feel disqualified. Like God can't use me. I, I kind of, I messed up. I fell out. But here they made him a governor. And they said, you're going to be a leader over the people. And when the word of the Lord came, they said, hey, you, Jehozadak, the one that feels like you missed your call, like it passed you by because you backslid, Guess what? I'm bringing you back home. I'm putting you back in position. Didn't I promise you that I had a call on your life? And he had a son. A son named Joshua, which means Jesus is, I mean, Jehovah is salvation. Maybe you're the first in your family to get saved. Maybe you're the first one, you know, to show up at church and and, and give up the drugs and the alcohol and the gangs. Maybe you're the very first one. Maybe you're the first one not to be in poverty in your family, the first one not to be on psych meds on your family. Maybe you're the very first one. But it doesn't mean you don't have a legacy. 
It doesn't mean, okay, that you aren't qualified. God says, I might be sending you out first, but you are going to leave a generation behind you. God always has a two-part plan. Number one, he works on you. And number two, he works through you, (laughs) okay? So now I hope you found yourself in the story because God's talking to you. (laughs) Point number two is God has a word for you. God has a specific word for you. See, this passage in, in uh, Haggai, okay, it was, ri- it was written and addressed to the leaders, to all the people. Nobody was excluded from this word. And this word was a word of preparation for the messianic return. And what does that mean? Well, Old Testament means Jesus hadn't come yet. And what this chapter means is they were saying, we need to prepare for Jesus' coming. Now, I don't know about you guys in the last two years, (laughs) but it's been a little rough. There's been pandemics and, and, and wars now, and there's been all of this strife and division. Even if you've never read the book of Revelations, I am 90% sure you know Jesus is coming. I mean, they're posting it on Instagram every day. They said, normal's not coming back. Jesus is. And church, we need to be prepared. I don't need anybody to run out and go stockpiling like all the corn. Don't buy up all the toilet paper. (laughs) Leave some for the rest of us. But I need you to be prepared to do the work of God. I need you to be prepared to share your faith. This world needs to see the glory of God. They need to see the power of God move. Right now, the world is being deceived by culture and media, and they're being taught that, and I saw so many of you getting rid of witchcraft books and false religion books, and you were throwing in the trash. There are generations right now of youth that are being indoctrinated. Look at all the movies. They're being taught that demonic power is the ultimate power, and that's a lie. Because we serve the Lord God of the host of heaven. That's our God. And he needs an army in this generation that is ready to take back the land, that is ready to rebuild the the palace and his kingdom, that is ready to see the house filled with his glory. Come on, we're doing this thing. Come on. (laughs) God says he was going to give us his promise. God said he was going to go with us. What more do we need? All right. Praise the Lord Jesus. Number three or two. What's one of those? Thank you, sir. God has a work for you to do. Tell your neighbor. God has something for you to do. Like, I know you thought Pastor Robert was going to knock on all the adoptive block doors for you. Right? I know you thought Pastor Gabriel was going to lead all the discipleship groups by himself. Like, that's their job, right? No. It's our job. God has a work for every one of us to do. And it's a specific work. See, there's a work that only Pastor Chris can do that nobody else can do. There is a work that Ryan has to do that nobody else has to do. There is a work that Jasmine has and Vanessa has. There is a job, a work assignment. There is a person. There is a ministry. There is a demonic stronghold assigned to your hammer to tear it down. And we need to get out there and do the work. See, while I was preparing, God reminded me of Queen Esther. And I was like, okay, well, she was in captivity too, and she was an orphan, and she had lost her family, and I get it, God. And and you brought her out of that ugly place, and you positioned her in the palace. 
And God said, yeah. But once she got there, I had to work for her to do. See, being in the house, getting into the palace, your name written on the Lamb's Book of Life isn't it. That's not where it stops, guys. That's where it starts. In Esther 4.14, it says uh, that she was told by her cousin, if you stay silent, that, that means if you act deaf, like you can't hear what God's saying to you right now. If you try to act like this message isn't for you. Hope's going to rise from another and destruction's going to come to your house then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. That, that assignment that they had for her, that, that, um, you know, that work that she was supposed to help God accomplish, that the word is hasael, hasasala. Well, it's something like that. You know, I don't speak Hebrew. But this is the thing. It was only used one time in the entire Old Testament. The word assigned to the work she was supposed to accomplish was in the Old Testament one time. It wasn't used in anybody else's conversation. It wasn't used for anybody else's assignment. It was used for hers. That's how specific God is. The Bible says that before you lived one day, he wrote down all of your days in his records in heaven. God has a plan. Pastor Marco was just talking to us about this. A plan for good to give us what? A hope and a future. And in Haggai, he said that future would be full of God's glory. Thank you, Jesus. We can't be distracted. We can't be delayed. We have to be about God's business right now. Thank you. Haggai 2.6 says, For this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, In just a little while I will again, mm -mm, I'm going to do this again, in just a little while, I'm going to again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans and the dry land. So what is God saying? God's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you've had your life shook up. And I know that, that you just got your balance again and you feel good. But I'm about to shake things up again. I'm about to turn the world upside down. And I know a scripture in the New Testament that says he just needed 12 men to turn the world upside down the last time. But God is getting ready to shake the heavens and the earth again. He wants people to wake up. He wants people to come out of their complacency. He wants people to come out of their bondage. And he wants his house full. That's why we build the house. That's why we spread the gospel. To build the kingdom of God. So nobody's disqualified. Nobody's off the hook on this one. No matter what you've been through, God wants to use you. I get this amazing privilege every single day of my life. I am blown away that God would take me with that background, that disqualified, and he would use me to bring him glory. God wants to use you. So I'm asking you, will you let him? Will you do the work? Will you build the, cal the palace? Will you fill his house? See, because those treasures he's asking for, he doesn't need your gold and your silver. He's got his, he said. He said, I got mine. I'm good. It's people. Deuteronomy 7 says that you are God's treasure. So tonight, if you don't know him, tonight, if you feel like you're still held hostage in Babylon, tonight, if condemnation is trying to disqualify you from God's use, then I want you to make your way to the altar tonight. I want you guys to get up out of your seats tonight. And I want you to sign up for the work God has for you. 
This is not a stay still moment, guys. This is a get activated moment. God is calling on us. The, the clock is ticking. Salvation is what we need. I just invite the altar team to come up. I know it went kind of fast tonight. But God's word's effective. God's word will, will pierce, it'll break. I know we were breaking a lot of idols tonight, and we saw bottles smashing and clothes being torn up. But if you have mindsets that need to be destroyed, if you have strongholds that need to be destroyed, then this is the place. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of your freedom. If you don't know Jesus, thank you, Lord. If you don't know him, he wants to meet you. We just thank the Lord right now for his presence, for his strength, for his goodness. Thank you, Lord. If there's somebody that you need to stand for, stand with, ask your neighbor right now. Do you need to go up there? Is there something holding you back? Is there something keeping you? Then we invite you up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Keep on coming up. Keep on coming up. Keep on coming up. There you go. Keep on coming up. You need to give your life to Jesus. Come on up. You need to rededicate your life to God. Come on up. Come on up. You need to get right with God right now. Come on up. You need to be delivered from something. Come on up. You need freedom right now. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Give it up for Christy. What a great word tonight. Come, 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 come. Give it up for these people that are coming up. Come, come. This is your day of freedom. This is your day of freedom, sir. That was a right on word for right now. I believe that was an end time teaching right now. God wants to activate you. It doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've been through, God wants to activate you. This ministry is getting ready. We're already taking over San Bernardino in Jesus' name. We're taking it over. Yeah, keep on coming. You need a breakthrough. You need Jesus. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. We are taking over San Bernardino in Jesus' name. Right now, San Bernardino, they just had a mayor debate last night to see who's going to be the next mayor of San Bernardino. Right now, San Bernardino is in transition right now. And I am declaring right now that yes, we're going to knock on every door this year in San Bernardino. His presence everywhere in San Bernardino. We pray for God's transition to take over San Bernardino. We're getting ready to take over Compton this year in Jesus' name. Come on up. Now, I want to activate you guys right now. The Holy Spirit wants to activate you for ministry. Just like the scripture in Esther, God has us right now in this season for such a time as this. And that scripture in Esther, I don't know if she read it. She mentioned it. It was on the screen. Can you put that scripture back up in Esther? Put it up fast. Esther, I think it was chapter 4. Put that scripture up in Esther. I don't know if she read it, but it was on the screen. That scripture said, if we 
are going to be quiet in a time like this our families could be destroyed please media team put that scripture up Esther put it up that's a prophetic scripture media team put that Esther scripture up please it's a prophetic scripture before we leave tonight, we're going to get you saved, but we got to get you activated. Some of you guys have been coming to church, but you still haven't stepped out yet. You still haven't stepped out into the purpose of your life. And the first step is holy warriors. That's our first step. Media team, where are they at? Put the scripture up, please, you guys. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. If you keep quiet at a time like this, we are not going to be quiet in a time like this. If you keep quiet in a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. We are here right now in 2022 in San Bernardino, part of the Wayroad Outreach, for such a time as this. Everybody in the front, just hang out for a minute. Everybody raise your, you can raise your hands. Raise your hands for a minute. We got to activate you right now. We got to activate you for ministry. We got to activate you right now to save souls like never before. This is not a time to be quiet. The devil is shouting, we're going to shout louder. The schools are shouting, we're going to shout louder. The gangsters are shouting, we're going to shout louder. Government is shouting, the kingdom will shout louder. Everybody handed it. Wave it. Surrender to God right now. Say, Jesus, activate me tonight for such a time as this. I will not be quiet in this last days. Jesus, use me. Holy Spirit, fill me. I will fulfill the promise of saving souls and making disciples like never before. Jesus anoint me Holy Spirit anoint me for these last days for I have been created for such a time as this Holy Spirit fill me there you go there you go there you go God is activating you tonight everybody here in the front I want you to repeat after me let's make Jesus the Lord of your life let's surrender everything to God Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent. I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I surrender everything, God. Holy Spirit, fill me. Jesus, set me free from all bad habits, from all addictions. I choose tonight to be a follower to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give all those a round of applause who came up. Your next step is Holy Warriors 1. You guys, we love you. We want to thank you so much for coming out tonight. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. Our team is not leaving. We're here. We'll pray with you to the very end. Pray for Pastor Marco. Again, he's in Arizona scoping out some new land. He'll be flying back tomorrow. He'll be ministering Sunday. God bless you guys. If God is for you, who can come against you? Everybody online, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out tonight.